learn about sexual reproduction in animals. We know that two parents participate in sexual reproduction. During sexual reproduction, the male germ cells is fused with the female germ cell to produce a zygote and develops into a new organism. Let's understand sexual reproduction in humans. Sexual maturity of parents is necessary in sexual reproduction. As a person grows in age, many changes occur in the body such as increase in length and weight. These are only physical changes. In the context of sexual maturity, boys and girls undergo various changes in the age group of 10 to 14 years. For example, appearance of body, development of reproductive organs and the different tissues which are helpful in sexual reproduction, etc. Moreover, there are different signs of sexual maturity such as thin hair appears on the legs and arms, thick hair grows in the armpits and in the genital area, between the thighs, the skin becomes oily, pimples may appear on the skin, and so on. Along with physical and mental changes, there is occurrence of some hormonal and emotional changes too. For example, the individual becomes more aware of himself and towards opposite sex. During this period, there are some changes which are different in boys and girls, such as in boys, there is appearance of a beard and moustache on the face, cracking of the voice, penis occasionally begins to become enlarged and erect either in the daydreams or at night, etc. Similarly, in girls, the breast size increases, the color of the nipples becomes darker, girls begin to menstruate, etc. Keep in mind that these changes occur slowly over time. All these changes may occur at different ages in different individuals. Also, it is not necessary that all changes occur in a person at the same time. These are slow changes with respect to time. From birth to adolescence, the body primarily focus on physical growth. But as the rate of physical growth slows down in the early years of adolescence, the reproductive tissue begins to develop. This period of adolescence is called puberty. Males and females become ready for reproduction after sexual maturity. Let us now understand the male reproductive system in humans. The male reproductive system in humans consists of pair of testes, the seminal vesicle, the vas deferens, the prostate gland, the urethra and the penis. Each testis produces male germ cells called sperm. Since the temperature required for the generation of sperms is less than body temperature, the testes are located outside the abdominal cavity in the scrotum. A sperm is a microstructure and contains genetic material and a long tail that allows it to float in the female reproductive cell. Testis also produce a hormone called testosterone which controls sperm production as well as the symptoms of puberty in boys. Transport of sperm is carried by vas deferens. The vas deferens joins with the tube coming from the bladder to form a joint tube. The secretions coming from the seminal vesicle and the prostate gland provide fluid medium for the transportation of sperm 
and also provide nourishment to the sperm. The penis transports the secretion to the female reproductive organ. Now, let's understand the female reproductive system in human. The female reproductive system consists of ovaries, oviducts, which are also known as fallopian tubes, the uterus, and the vagina. A female germ cell is called an egg cell is formed in the ovary. Various hormones such as estrogen are also produced in the ovaries. From the birth of a girl, there are many immature eggs present in the ovaries. They begin to mature at puberty. An egg is matured by one of the two ovaries every month. It is carried by the fallopian tube into elastic bag-like structure called the uterus. The uretus and the vagina are attached to the cylinder-shaped cervix. At the time of sexual intercourse between human males and human females, sperm are transported from male's body to the vagina. The sperm reach up to the oviduct by moving outward. In the fallopian tube, fusion of sperm and egg cell may occur. We call it as fertilization. This produces a fertilized egg which is called zygote. Zygote divides several times and in 4 to 5 days, it forms a ball-like structure called embryo. This embryo attaches to the uterine wall where it develops. For this, a disc-like structure is developed in the wall of the uterus, which is called placenta. The placenta is attached to the embryo by the umbilical cord. With the help of the umbilical cord, the placenta supplies glucose, oxygen and essential substances to the fetus. Similarly, it removes carbon dioxide and other excretory products produced by the fetus. In about 9 months after pregnancy, the fetus is fully developed and ready for delivery. During delivery, there is rhythmic contraction of the uterine muscles that leads to the birth of an infant. So now, you must have understood the function of sexual reproduction in humans. Today we have learned about sexual reproduction in animals. 